Holstein America is sponsored by Merck Animal Health, an industry leader in dairy care solutions, and the makers of Vista vaccines. Visit thebestdefense.com to learn more. It's family farms and rural places, a community and a shared vision. It's taking a step forward each day. It's embracing opportunity and supplying the world with quality milk and dairy products. And none of this would be possible without U.S. registered Holsteins, the world's perfect cow, and the people who raise them. We believe that working with the Holstein Association is ultimately an investment in our future. You have this wealth of information basically at your fingertips, and it's amazing the things that you'll find. 100% of my success on what we're doing here is because of the registered Holstein cow. This is Holstein America. Hi, I'm Michelle Davidson. In countless ways, the Holstein cow is our great provider. She supplies more than 90% of all milk and contributes to all the dairy products we enjoy. A cold glass of milk and a variety of delicious cheeses, yogurt, and of course, ice cream. Over the next hour, we'll meet people and families who have embraced the diversity and strength of U.S. registered Holsteins and created their own unique opportunities. Our journey begins on a family farm in Minnesota, where Elise Schostrom, while still in high school, set her sights on becoming a cheesemaker. I'm sitting right in front of our creamery here and I can see our cows uh, right from where I'm sitting. And we have a pipeline that runs underground in a concrete tunnel basically from our parlor that hauls the milk right over to our cheese plant straight from the cow. We made sure when we built our cheese company that we would be handling the milk in a respectful way, in a way that allows our end product to be extra special. So the farm that Redhead Creamery is located on, it's Jerry Lindy Farms. It was started by my parents, Jerry and Linda Jennison. They have been farming on this farm site since 1983, two years before I was born, and it's a privilege for me and my, my husband and my family to be able to be part of it with them now. Well, my parents have been involved in the registered Holstein business their entire lives, and my dad has utilized the genetics of our cows to produce a high milk component cow. And knew someday we would be paid for our components in the milk. We now have cows that are producing uh, milk components that are similar to that of a Jersey cow. And we produce a lot more milk with our Holstein cows. And we say that in cheese making because that's extremely important to have uh, high milk components for yield. And so uh, being able to look back into the heritage of our, our cattle and, and having those records has been extremely beneficial to our dairy farm, which relates directly to our cheese company. I was a senior in high school when I went on the National 4-H dairy conference trip and we toured Crave Brothers Farmstead Cheese and that's when it was like my aha moment that I'm gonna make cheese someday and I'm going to use our own milk right on our farm and we're gonna make this happen. We were excited about that possibility to have a child come home and farm with you and, and uh, maybe have the chance to build upon the things that you've worked on your whole life is a dream. And so we encouraged her. We knew nothing about cheese making, so we told her that she needed to um, learn how to make cheese and then she needed to share that with us. And so she, she did. She went um, and studied at the University of Minnesota and learned all about marketing there because they told her that making cheese is going to be a lot easier than selling it. And if you want to keep making it, you need to, you need to sell it. Lucas proposed to her in front of the beef barn on the St. Paul campus. And uh, when he uh, graduated, he had a job waiting for him at Holstein in Brattleboro. 
and uh, they got married on Saturday, left Monday morning for the trip to Brattleboro, Vermont. We spent a lot of our weekends going to the creameries and craft breweries, uh, talking to uh, dairy farmers from all around the state, asking how they got into the creamery business, and frankly, figuring out that we thought we could do this too. By the time we left Vermont a couple years later, we really had Redhead Creamery sketched out on a napkin exactly what it should look like. Uh, we knew we wanted a viewing area that people could see. Uh, we knew how we wanted the design from all the other dairy producers who told us their best ideas and worst ideas along the way. And uh, we thought just maybe uh, we could do farm tours for people coming out to the farms. Sharing what we do in agriculture with the community and watching their excitement and their interest in learning more has been really rewarding for us as people in agriculture. When we do our farm tours and we talk about how every calf has its photo taken, it's attached to an application for registry, sent to the Holstein Association, recorded, and that we are able to trace their ancestry back, in most cases, to the late 1800s and the look on their faces, the feeling of, are you kidding me? I had no idea. You can see the dairy right here and all the dairy cattle. And here you have the, the cheese and a lot of the, uh, the cheese on this menu uh, comes right from these cows. And uh, that's what draws people from a long ways away. So we were very surprised at the distance people would travel to tour a dairy farm at the questions they would have and and how passionately they feel about knowing where their, where their food comes from. We purchased some cheese at the farmer's market in New London about a week ago, and it was so good, we decided we're gonna drive back up and we're going home with lots of it. It's fabulous. I want to try to develop the farm to be sustainable long-term. It's socially acceptable, environmentally acceptable, and that it's that is profitable. I, I think that the cheese and the egg tourism aspect, along with a superior herd of cows, will carry us there. Five to ten years, I look at improving a quality of life and improving how much we're involved in the community and how we can develop ourselves every day. We always try to empower our employees to feel the passion that we have for what we're doing and hope that we continue to be known for someone who is transparent and producing a quality product and are down-to-earth people that you want to buy good cheese from. U.S. registered Holsteins make great tasting products like high-quality cheese possible. But beyond the enjoyment of delicious food, dairying is also a serious business. Back in February, before COVID-19 impacted the country, Holstein Association USA's Board of Directors gathered in Washington, D.C. From the farm to Capitol Hill, it was an important journey, representative of the ongoing work the Holstein Association does on behalf of its members. Follow along with Holstein Association USA Board Member Dwight Rokey of Kansas. I am a country boy, and so uh, going into big cities doesn't really entice me, <laughs> other than doing it for the dairy industry. Um, I can't say that I have a desire to go. <laughs> Getting to visit with the senators, just to, to talk with them, to share our life, our story with them, is probably the thing that I'm most excited about on this trip. I grew up on a farm. It was a hog farm um, and beef and crop farm, kind of a diversified uh, family farm. So I didn't really have any dairy in my background. We took a family vacation to Wisconsin to visit some of my mom's relatives up there. Um, they happened to have a little, I don't know, 40 or 50 cow tie stall barn. And so we walked into the barn and my jaw just dropped. I'm like, this is like the neatest thing I've ever seen, you know? And as a young boy at that time, it's like, uh, this is what I really want to do when I grow up. So in 1999, November 11th, uh, was the first milking um, in our barn where we're at now. My main priority or my main focus is the cows. I really care about cow families. I mean, just seeing, you know, you're pretty well assured um, if you've got the genetics that you're going to get a good calf. 
the way society is, is shifting and people want to know where their food comes from, where their milk comes from, it's really exciting to say, look, here's this pedigree, you know, and we can trace it back multiple generations, keeping to strive for better quality, better genetics, and better production is really what, what keeps me ticking. So the registered business is pretty important to me, and I really care about our members, you know, everybody else out there um, that maybe that aren't overly involved, but they milk cows and they enjoy what they're doing. And I really want, I really want it to work for everybody. I think there's huge opportunity for young families to have a dairy. Sometimes the registration part looks more difficult, but if people can see the value that it brings and the value that it can be to the consumer, I think there's, there's a bright future ahead. It's quite interesting to think about. You know, here I was in Northeast Kansas, um, rolling out of bed at four o'clock this morning um, to milk cows. And I'm gonna end up in Washington, D.C. Um, at the nation's capital um, in a hotel in early evening. <laughs> to think that them things are possible, that they happen, it was kind of amazing that, that we have that ability. So yeah, we're here at the, uh, the Senate office at the Hart Building, and so we plan to meet with my representatives and hopefully just visit with them about the dairy industry, American agriculture. A couple of key topics that we'd like to touch on are animal identification, the importance of getting a national identification program up and going and implemented, and then also um, imitation melts to try to get the labeling off of the imitations um, that are trying to rob our product. So for me being, you know, a first generation dairyman, I never dreamt that I would be here in the Capitol to represent our members, to represent um, Holstein USA. We are their voice. And so I, I count it a privilege to be here today and to visit with, with the representatives and tell them what we, um, how we're feeling in the industry and what we anticipate, what we were looking forward to, what things down the road can help the dairy industry and American agriculture. It's really encouraging to me that they, they seem to care. They want to listen to us. They want to hear what we have to say. So being in contact with them and listening to what they really care about um, and then being able to portray it from a producer standpoint, um, I think is really valuable. And I know a lot of our members can't be here, but I think the main message is just in their daily life, in their daily interaction, wherever they're at, to let people know what you do and that you enjoy what you're doing and how you do it because um, I think there's such a misconception in society of, of what happens on a dairy farm, you know? So I, I think sharing that with just your neighbor, just the person who you're sitting beside in church. What keeps me optimistic about doing this is the optimism I see in my fellow board members. You know, our industry has been in a downturn for five, six years, but yet there's so much opportunity ahead and optimism that you know what we can change this we're gonna we're gonna move forward when we return learn the important role registered Holsteins play for the McCarty family in western Kansas and Ohio Holstein Association USA's tag ID program provides a simple efficient and cost-effective solution for permanently identifying your animals Holstein's all flex tags are tamper proof fade resistant and customizable. That's right, ear tags can be printed with custom information for your farm or individual animals. Visit HolsteinUSA.com to learn more or contact us to place your order. Did you know Holstein Association USA offers a wide range of genomic testing options that are convenient, economical, and simple for your herd? In partnership with Zoetis, Holstein offers their line of clarified genomic tests and the online management tool Enlight. 
Enlight is a comprehensive program designed to help Holstein breeders efficiently manage herd genetics. Visit HolsteinUSA.com to learn more or contact us today. This program is broadcast with support from Merck Animal Health. Trust in Vista vaccines for the most complete, longest-lasting respiratory protection for your dairy and one-dose fetal protection for your cow herd. Learn more at thebestdefense.com. Welcome back. Over the years, sustainability, stewardship, and entrepreneurial savvy have allowed McCarty Family Farms to grow in innovative ways. Most recently, joining a partnership to establish MVP Dairy in Ohio, among the most state-of-the-art advanced dairy farms in the country. The Ohio Farmer also attracts thousands of visitors each year to its Dairy Learning Center, where it shares the journey of milk from the land to nutritious yogurt like this. At the center of it all are U.S. registered Holsteins. My family's originally from northeastern Pennsylvania. We ended up in northwest Kansas because my parents realized that the future for our family to maintain a, a presence in the, in the ag industry was gonna be very limited. So uh, in the early 90s, they began to look for other areas of opportunity. In 1999, we ended up moving and settling here in northwest Kansas. Today, we milk approximately 2,000 cows here. Uh, there is a, a heifer yard located on this farm as well that contains roughly around a thousand head of young stock, uh, about 500 head of Springer heifers, and then the dry cows for this dairy and two of the outlying farms. But then on top of that, this farm also has an evaporative milk condensing plant located on it. And that condensing plant is responsible for taking in milk from the outlying farms uh, separating it into the skim and cream portions, and then evaporating out a large percentage of the water from the skim portion. That re reduces our environmental impact on, in terms of trucks over the road to move our product to market. But beyond that, it keeps water over top of the ground from which it came. And in Northwest Kansas, water conservation and water reclamation and water stewardship is a really critical deal. Traditionally, McCarty Family Farms has been a market-based area. And as we saw an increasing amount of volatility in the ag markets, whether that be the commodity markets uh, of row crops, uh, corn and soybeans, or the milk markets, or the beef cattle markets, uh, we knew that our business wasn't financially strong enough to withstand that volatility. So uh, we had an initial meeting with the milk procurement team from, uh, at the time, Dannon and they presented to us their vision for buying milk in the future, and our vision and their vision were immediately aligned. The aligned goals of, uh, of both of our teams, of both of our work families is really about stability, transparency, continuous improvement, and uh, a collaborating effort to make things better every day. It's really kind of pulled back the veil of where our milk goes, what our milk does, what our milk goes into, and ultimately how we can make our milk better to better fit those needs. Kind of as our business progressed and transformed and the Dannon relationship became a bigger part of, of who we were, uh, we were looking for an opportunity to grow outside of Kansas that filled a need in one of their milk sheds. We had always been intrigued with Ohio. We looked for probably two years at potential dairies, existing dairies, dairy sites, and you know, kind of came away with the idea in mind that, hey, if we're gonna do something, we need to build it. Luckily, we met some like-minded brothers that have become our partners there, uh, and they brought the cropping side, the land-based side to things that gave us a pretty unique opportunity to come in basically within 20 miles of Dan and his largest plant and build a facility where we could ship raw milk efficiently to them. So MVP Dairy stands for the McCarty Van Tilburg Partnership. It brings together two fourth generation farming families, one with an expertise, the Van Tilburgs in um, grain and crop farming, and the McCarty family, um, a, a rich history in dairy farming together that forms the, the dairy farm that we're in today um, in Salina, Ohio. 
We milk uh, about 3,800 cows here three times a day. Um, we milk those 3,800 cows on an 80 stall D Laval rotary platform. Um, we have a very specialized crew that um, training is of the utmost um, importance for MVP. So we train all of our employees through all of the, the stages and essentially their activities throughout the day. So my milking crews trained, my herd health crews trained. Um, herd health includes reproduction, um, vaccines, etc. Um, we also have a full-time maternity staff on, on board because we do CAV 365 days a year. One of the biggest focuses that we have here at MVP and across the board with McCarty Family Farms is a focus on sustainability, innovation, continuous improvement. A lot of that then is showcased in the Dairy Learning Center itself to really open the doors and, and walk people through um, all those innovations and, and essentially how we're producing milk today. So when people come and visit uh, MVP's Learning Center, I, I really hope that a lot of their takeaways revolves around Yes, we're a large animal ag facility, but we're a large family-owned facility. We all have children, members of the community working for us, working around us. You know, we want our business to be viable uh, for long into the future, and that takes a lot of effort and care for these animals. And the other main takeaway is hey, how food is produced. You know, we there's a lot of, of love and effort that goes into making an actual cup of yogurt that you're buying on the store shelf. And we just hope that people take away bits and pieces of that to realize what it actually takes that it doesn't just show up and appear on a store shelf. And we chose to go with Holsteins because we feel like uh, that animal gives us the most versatility uh, in terms of, of what she's gonna eat in a day and how she converts that to milk volume as well as components. Um, we're very pleased with the output of the animals, uh, the, the docility of the animals. You know, they're very good animals, uh, easy to care for. Um, and they're built to last. McCarty Family Farms in the West and MVP are moving to, if not 100% registered Holsteins. Years and years ago, our grandfather, our great grandfather, and my father even, believed in good genetics and good cattle. And when we got to the point of growth in Kansas, that was kind of one of our goals, to say hey, we gotta get back to breeding good cows, identifying good cows, you know, we wanted that to be something that was part of our brand, in a sense. We believe that working with the Holstein Association is ultimately an investment in our future. We know that we can only control so many factors that go into making milk on our farms, but that the cornerstone of milk production ultimately is the cow. And without investing in her future and without investing in a, a ultimately a better cow, uh, we're going to reach a ceiling in our, our level of milk production. And we tie milk production on our farms back to uh, economical viability, sustainability, animal welfare. Milk production really is a key indicator of health and well being of any dairy farm out there. And we know that for us to achieve the goals that we have for our cow herds, that we have to invest in the genetics and the genetic future of our cow herd. And the best way that we felt that we could achieve that was by working with ultimately people that were smarter and more knowledgeable in that area than we were. And that led us to the Holstein Association. There's probably nobody better to verify and validate what we have going on. I mean, it's a true indicator of your commitment to breeding and identifying and understanding the absolute best animal you can have. But there really is no better standard than a registered Holstein. We're now entering the phase where we've got cows good enough uh, that we can begin to flush those animals. Uh, we've got cows that are good enough that we can begin to market those animals. Things that we historically never really dreamt of and never would have realized without the, the relationship with the Holstein Association, those things are becoming reality. We underestimated the depth, I think, of the Holstein Association and the quality of people that they have to help tailor registered Holsteins to McCarty Family Farms. And one of the key things that we work with the Holstein Association on every single month is identifying the very best of our herd and identifying the very worst of our herd, with the goal being that we maybe chart a different course for the, the bottom of our herd, but that we also chart a different course for the top end of our herd. And we try to basically drive both aspects of the bell curve of our genetics of our herd forward at a much faster pace. 
and we wouldn't be where we're at today in terms of milk production or genetic profile without the help of the Holstein Association. I mean, there's days where literally I, I, I can't believe we're doing the things we're doing. Uh, 72 pound dairy when we start with Dannon, and if you go to MVP today, this morning, we were 102.46 pounds of milk. So to see a 30 pound increase in your animals over less than a 10 year span, eight year span, uh, I know we're doing something right. Genetically speaking, our cattle have just gotten better. And it's, we, we see it not just in the production side, you see it in health events, you see it in every aspect of cow care. So it's, it's almost surreal at times. The, one of the best days I have every week is on the weekends that I work on a Sunday when I can just walk cows and the dairy's quiet, my email account is quiet, and I get to spend time with high quality, well cared for dairy cattle, Holstein cattle, that that's just a great day. We know that for us to continually improve, we have to continually improve her. And registration helps us achieve that. Registration helps us achieve a more traceable cow herd, a more traceable food supply chain. And those are all things that we think are gonna be really valuable for us from a, from a cow herd point of view, but also from purely a milk marketing point of view in the future. When we return, learn the important role registered Holsteins play for dairy farms across the country. Are you looking for something new in your Holstein breeding program? Look no further than Holstein Marketplace Sires. This unique program makes it possible for Holstein breeders like you to market semen from your bulls to other dairy cattle breeders. You retain ownership while Holstein Marketplace Sires provides the avenue for semen to be sold. Purchasing is easy. Order online or over the phone and semen will be delivered straight to your doorstep. Holstein Marketplace Sires, breeders selling to breeders. Visit HolsteinUSA.com to learn more. Did you know Holstein Association USA offers a wide range of genomic testing options that are convenient, economical, and simple for your herd? In partnership with Zoetis, Holstein offers their line of clarified genomic tests and the online management tool Enlight. Enlight is a comprehensive program designed to help Holstein breeders efficiently manage herd genetics. Visit HolsteinUSA.com to learn more or contact us today. Holstein America is brought to you by our friends at Merck Animal Health, the makers of Vista and the leading provider of dairy care solutions. Visit DairyCare365.com for support, tips, and products to provide your herd with the best possible care. Tradition and innovation run deep at Green Meadow Farms. For generations, the family has found new ways to grow and improve their dairy operation partnering with nearby Michigan State University on the latest technology and management practices, all while staying true to their registered Holstein cow. You can't figure out every conceivable outcome to everything that's gonna happen in life. You can't predict it. it is, we don't have a crystal ball. But you know, if you surround yourself with people that you trust and you have respect for, which is what we've done here, then you know that anything comes up, you'll figure it out. My father, he bought his first registered cow, I think, in 1918. Uh, he was about 16 years old, and he peddled milk around a little town called Ashley, about 10 miles from here. He, in the 1930s, bought cows here in, uh, in Michigan and took them to the East Coast and sold them as in the, for the certified dairies in New York City producing milk. That's how he survived the Depression. I got really involved in the 50s and 60s uh, uh, after I graduated Michigan State. Uh, in 1960, we built our first uh, large operation for 1,000 cows, and that was pretty good for 1960. Of course, we, that was the big dairy, and they were all registered Holsteins. We used to go by uh, Railroad car, box car, to different fairs week after week to merchandise our cattle. 
We've been a family farm all our life, and we've always regarded employees as part of the family. I mean, the, yeah, they've always been part of what's going on. I guess I first realized I liked dairy cows in about the third grade. We went on a school field trip to a dairy farm, and kind of was cow crazy ever since. <laughs> when I first started here, we were milking about 1,100 cows in a 32 stall polygon parlor. And then after I'd been here a few years, we expanded from 1,100 cows, went up to 3,000 cows. And that's where we're at currently, just over 3,000 cows. And we're milking in two large herringbone parlors. We've always hoped that Green Mill Farms would be looked upon as progressive, that we were on the cutting edge of what's going on in the industry. We were early adopters of most technology, AI or RFID tags, identification. We have the Veterinary Center here from Michigan State. We can have students here after about a 20 minute drive. It helps us because the students can see the cows in their traditional environment. The Green family is very supportive of what we're trying to do. They feel very strongly about being part of training the future generation of people that work in the dairy industry, and we wouldn't have been able to do this without their support. Today's one of the classifying days here at Green Meadow Farms. Uh, we classify three times a year. Usually it takes a couple days whenever the classifiers come out. Two classifiers come out and analyze the cows, looking for uh, good feet and legs, good udders, rump structure, body structure, front ends, uh, and they're comparing those our cows to the ideal dairy cow. Part of why I've stayed in this business most of my life is uh, I like working with cattle. You know, it's very satisfying to raise a calf up until she's uh, one, of the, one of the mainstays of the herd and, and making lots of milk and trying to improve her offspring so that when the classifier comes, you know, you can get excellent daughters out of excellent cows. You know, those, it's always a challenge to find those kind of cow families that will transmit that that kind of genetics from generation to generation. Even though we had a large herd in 1960, everything was for sale. We thought, well, today everything is for sale also. I mean, that's why we keep, that's why we have registered cattle. And now the registered Holstein is what uh, gives you in a poor economy, like we've had for the last four and a half years, we've been able to sell, probably sell them for two to $300 more than just an ordinary uh, heifer. So. The Rashford Hosting has allowed us to do a lot of things. They've always been pretty good to us over the years. We've realized a long time ago that if you treat that Hosting cow right, she's going to treat you right. Green Meadow Farms and dairy farming in the future is, is uh, going to go with technology. I mean, we're trying, we're, we spend a lot of time trying to increase in efficiencies and automation and that kind of thing. So I don't think we've seen near the end of that progress yet. The year 2020 will remain etched in our memory for generations to come. For dairy farmers, it's been a time of both unpredictable highs and lows. Dairy economist Dr. Robert Kropp shares his insight on the current dairy economy and what America's dairy farmers should keep in mind during this historic year. The year 2020 met with hopeful expectation for a new decade, new opportunity. Instead, the entire world has faced uncharted challenges, with economic pressure and uncertainty reaching every industry, every family. For the nation's dairy producers, markets have experienced extreme highs and extreme lows. I think volatility is here to stay, not to the extreme we've seen this year, I mean, where you get an $8 change from one month to another. With the coronavirus, there's so much uncertainty exactly how well the markets are going to do. Food service constitutes about half of the market for cheese and, and for butter. Uh, retail has picked up a lot, but not to offset that. What will the remainder of 2020 bring? Crop anticipates that the year's overall average milk price should remain encouraging for dairy producers. As we end out the year, uh, it's still uncertain where we're going to end up. We do get a little spike, uh, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas. People buy a little more cheese, a little more butter. Overall, for the year, uh, a lot better than we thought was going to be back in May when we had a Class 3 price of twelve fourteen. So we'll average... Uh, uh, probably somewhere between the $17, $18 range there, which is 
uh, not too bad of air. Milk prices are sensitive to any supply and demand changes, Crop explains. Farmers and cooperatives that helped manage supply in the early days of the pandemic played an important role in later price recovery, and increased demand from the global market was essential too. We are now producing the type of dairy products that the world market wants to expand our exports. Well, we export now about 15% of our milk production. Actually, in the month of May, we had some record exports. We export about 17% of our milk production. It has a big impact on our milk price. The type of dairy products consumers demand has changed in recent years. And as a result, so has milk pricing. The highest component value on the larger share of the farmer's milk check in the last few years has been butter fat. And uh, used to be protein. But that's a change. Butter consumption's gone up. Whole milk consumption's gone up. Or eat more cheese, that also takes up more butter fat. And that's, just, that's been a worldwide situation, not just in the U.S. Responding to these market signals, dairy farmers have answered the call for higher component milk by focusing their breeding programs. Holstein breeders have bred for higher butter fat. And, of course, Holstein breeders got higher production. So they're selling more total pounds of this. The Holstein breed will continue to be uh, the dominant breed. Because many question marks lie ahead for the coming months and year, Crop suggests dairy farmers take a closer look at risk management tools, including the Dairy Margin Protection Program and Revenue Protection Program. But when there's opportunities, you need to take advantage of them. For Holstein Association USA, I'm Miles Ramsey. Holstein America will be back after this informational segment from Merck Animal Health. There has been a lot of research in the past 20 years focusing on dry cow management. Really focusing on the dry period is going to pay big, big dividends for, for our, our producers. First of all, we have to think about stockmanship. So making sure that we're handling these cows correctly with low stress level, it's going to help the overall uh, health of these cows and not impacting their dry matter intake, for example. But we have to have a clean and dry place for these cows to lay down so we can try to reduce bacteria exposure to the teat end. Mastitis is gonna be one area of focus regardless if it's the dry period or the lactating period. We have to think a dry off. We need to keep in mind that we're gonna have dry cow therapy. If it's gonna be a blanket dry cow therapy or a selective dry cow therapy, we have to think about teat sealants. That's going to also minimize the risk of intramammary infections. So another important aspect to consider when we're managing our dry cows is the timing that we're going to be conducting some of our practices. Usually we rely on days carrying calf or days of gestation. But the reality is we're going to have variation in gestation length of our dairy cows. So it's important for us to look at our herd what is the actual, what's the actual gestation length? So when we're building our vaccination programs, we're gonna be giving vaccine at the right timing, producing antibodies that are gonna be present in the colostrum. So we can provide the best protection for the baby calf. And we have to keep in mind that for us to have a healthy calf, we have to have a healthy cow. So if we put a large focus in our dry period, using a good vaccination program, having good results with our dry cow therapy using a teat sealant, it should result in healthier cows and increase reproductive efficiency because health is not gonna be jeopardizing reproductive performance of these cows by the time that we're gonna be breeding them. There are a lot of resources out there for us to train our employees how to handle cows correctly. And one great resource is the Dairy Care 365 program provided by Merck Animal Health. It's a free resource online that has several modules in English and Spanish, and producers and workers can rely on that resource to really educate their employees and to do what's the best for our dairy cows. Holstein Association USA's Tag ID program provides a simple, efficient, and cost-effective solution for permanently identifying your animals. Holstein's Allflex tags are tamper-proof, fade-resistant, and customizable. That's right, ear tags can be printed with custom information for your farm or individual animals. Visit HolsteinUSA.com to learn more or contact us to place your order. 
Merck Animal Health is proud to share stories from America's dairy farmers by sponsoring Holstein America. When every decision counts, trust Vista to help protect your herd against respiratory and reproductive diseases. See how Vista offers the industry's most complete protection at thebestdefense.com. Welcome back. Beyond an abundance of high-quality milk, U.S. registered Holsteins offer great value when it comes to marketing dairy cattle genetics. Minnesota breeder Spencer Hackett recognized this opportunity early on. He employs sophisticated science to lead the way for genetic improvement and secure a future for the family farm. Central Minnesota is what I call where I live. You gotta like the cold up here a little bit, you know, 20 below, we'll, we'll see that. Been married for 34 years now. Um, two boys, they both are on the farm here with us. Everybody's involved 100% with our family operation. We've always been a registered herd. We've embraced new technology and everything. We've done some showing in the past. We've had some cattle out at World Dairy Expo. Lately, we've gone more to the genomic side of things. I think the embryo work and everything we do on this farm, it's the most productive work we're doing on our farming practice all the way around. We farm a thousand acres of corn and soybeans and alfalfa, but my embryo work, my genetic progress that we can keep making in this game has been our best return for our, our family farm so far. We want to keep the family farm going. You have to work the assets you have on your own dairy. I'm a guy who's not afraid to invest in an animal or into a cow family that I believe in to see if we can get a return on that investment. It's hard to pay for a really good cow just based on milk sales. So why not capitalize on her offspring or something and try to generate some additional dollars there, which the registered Holstein cow has allowed me to do that. Our embryo transfer work around here involves both conventional flushing and some IVF work. We go through and we genomic test our heifers. Then we start to look at the top 10% of our heifers and not necessarily the highest ones are the ones you're looking at. You know, I, I like to look at heifers that have unique traits that may be something we can emphasize and go forward. A2A2 is something we've been concentrating on here for a couple years. We have uh, identified it in certain milk and it's easier on the digestive system of people that are lactose intolerant. So, of course, we all wanna be able to have a product that everybody can drink and enjoy the benefits of. So now we're turning around and we're concentrating on A2A2 to try to make sure every mating has a chance of being an A2A2 mating. Some of these heifers that have these desirable secondary traits, so to speak, to make a product that can make a higher quality cheese or, or be more friendly to the consumer, we have to look at those heifers and maybe she's not the highest ranking heifer in our program, but she's got all those other traits we're looking for. We have to move her up the ladder in our selection for who we're gonna flush and go forward with. They started flushing back in the early 90s, so that some of these techniques are just built over the years. There are definitely advantages to the IVF and there's advantages to the conventional. Both of them are tools, so it's, they can be used intertwined. Show cattle are so important, how they look still important, but their genomics has allowed that tool to be able to select a little more for that farm and get the productivity a little more for that farm. It's still very crucial to have a registered Holstein because cow families is where it's at. Spencer, he goes on cow families when he does it. He doesn't go just on numbers. It's a lot of cow families that he goes with and that's what makes the value in those to him and therefore can translate onto what's marketable for him. We're on the left side now. So we'll take the embryos out of that side and take them back in the laboratory and find them. Hopefully. <laughs> yep. We try to get involved in all the programs with Holstein USA. That's really where everybody finds me when they're looking, is they made contact or looked at a list on Holstein USA, and that made them order a pedigree, which gave them my address, which gave them my phone number, and the next thing you know, they're coming right to my door to generate dollars for our family. There's good cows all over the country. They weren't put on this earth just to give milk. They were put on this earth to maybe reproduce and using technology to reproduce at a higher rate. 
I think the key to being good is being precise, no matter how long you've done it. But the, the fun part of embryology is always when you, you put the dish on here and you start finding embryos. We'll take them up to over 100 magnification to tell how good they are. The first one looks like it has some promise here, even at the low mag. I couldn't imagine taking some of these really good heifers or really good young cows of ours and just being happy with one calf, hopefully every 13 months, you know? Yeah, it's an animal that we've been working with over the last couple of years that did IVF the whole time. She's approaching 200 animals being registered out of her. So her production has multiplied that much with just one animal. Basically, we're gonna load up the two embryos we're gonna transfer out of this flush. I load them in straws here, and we're gonna load them up to take them out to the recipients. All right, we should be good there. We're ready to go. One hundred percent of my success on what we're doing here is because of the registered Holstein cow. She's got the size and the capability and the genetic diversity that we can make her adapt to whatever the markets want us to do. The embryo work we do today is gonna to be what we're hoping is in demand three years from now. If you're in a fluid milk market, breed for pounds. If you're a creamery or wherever you sell your milk in the part of the world you're at, they want high components. Well, with the Holstein cow, you can select those bulls to give you that really high component milk. And it's the registered cow that has turned around and made every cow better. When Holstein America returns, we travel to Wisconsin and meet a pair of young leaders making their mark in the dairy industry. Are you looking for something new in your Holstein breeding program? Look no further than Holstein Marketplace Sires. This unique program makes it possible for Holstein breeders like you to market semen from your bulls to other dairy cattle breeders. You retain ownership, while Holstein Marketplace Sires provides the avenue for semen to be sold. Purchasing is easy, order online or over the phone, and semen will be delivered straight to your doorstep. Holstein Marketplace Sires, breeders selling to breeders. Visit HolsteinUSA.com to learn more. This program is broadcast with support from Merck Animal Health. Trust in Vista vaccines for the most complete, longest lasting respiratory protection for your dairy and one dose fetal protection for your cow herd. Learn more at thebestdefense.com. Welcome back, Wisconsin, America's Dairyland, and a place where young families like Kurt and Sarah Lair can live out their dream. Named this year's Distinguished Young Holstein Breeders by Holstein Association USA, the couple takes great pride in producing nutritious milk and dairy products from their elite herd of registered Holsteins. Winning the Breeder Award is pretty amazing. There's a lot of great people that have won that award that have gone before us, and we don't even think of ourselves as being in that category. Made things a lot better after the last four or five years that the dairy industry has really struggled with. It kind of reignited the fire in us. Goes back to uh, what my eighth grade teacher taught me. He said, there's a lot more talented people than you, but no one works harder than you. So I think that's a testament to, to what we do every day. What I enjoy every day is having the ability to work with my wife and kids, seeing the, the joy that my kids have right now at that age where they're they're gung-ho about it the passion they're starting to acquire it we run about 300 acres of land about 150 acres of alfalfa we sell that to our neighbor and then we use that money to buy uh, hay from out west uh, it allows us to focus a little bit more on quality that we can do around here on a day-to-day -day basis rather than having our time take up with field work so we made that change about six years ago, and it's probably one of the best things that we've done for our operation. Currently, we got about 250 animals on site, about 120 milk cows and dry cows. The rest are heifers. So our cows get milked in a traditional tie stall barn with long day lighting, tunnel ventilation, new Krayberg mattresses, Krayberg rubber in the alleyway, and with automatic takeoffs, we can get 100 cows milked in about hour and 35, hour and 40 minutes. 
Our rolling herd average right now is 24. We're right around a 4.1 fat and a 3.15 protein. Our cell count is consistently under 100,000. Our BAA is 110.7. It's been as high as 111.2 helps contribute to the pedigree of the heifers that we like to sell in the spring of every year. This is one of my favorite cows in the whole barn. She lets the girls milk her. Like they get right underneath her and wipe and put the milker on themselves and she never gives you an ounce of trouble. So that's definitely my, my perfect cow. You know, we think the whole scene is a perfect cow just because I think it's a perfect combination of type production, feed efficient animals that uh, are here to set us up for a sustainable, profitable future. I've been part of the dairy registered Holstein community in general for as long as I can remember. So I've always been really interested in the history of it and uh, the pedigrees and the family lines. So I register all the calves with Easy, which is actually really super handy. They send you the ear tags and you don't need pictures, you don't need to draw anything. We also do Holstein Complete so that everything's kind of included in our bundle and that's been really handy too with registrations and you know, pay a little bit every month with the bill and it's all right there. That I think is the best part about having registered Holsteins is you have this wealth of information basically at your fingertips and it's amazing the things that you'll find. I think that's rubbed off on my daughter, Adela, because she's been reading registration papers and she remembers, you know, if we have something that was maybe bred by something else, she remembers all this stuff. A big chunk of our breeding philosophy revolves around show type. You know, we sell 12 to 15 show efforts a year. This year we've had some sell from Maryland all the way to California. It's the bug that everyone's got. You know, they want one that's gonna compete. And so that's what we try and breed for is to sell ones that are gonna compete on a national level. The biggest thing that keeps us optimistic, I believe for the dairy industry is, I think things are starting to come full circle now where people are starting to see where their food comes from on a daily basis. People want to buy local. They want to buy food that comes from places where they know the people that are producing it, you know. We actually had a Girl Scout troop from Milwaukee come and their moms. I think that was the best part. Uh, their moms came and toured everything and I showed them how well we treat our cattle, how well they eat, probably better than all of us, <laughs> you know, very balanced diet. They milked a cow. I showed them how a milker worked, you know, with the vacuum and where the milk goes in the pipeline. So I just, I would like to invite consumers to the farm to show them how we do it. My wife and I are extremely involved in uh, our area associations. The big thing that drives us for that is we really love kids. And the other thing that drives it is I didn't grow up with them opportunities, and I see how much them opportunities, the networking, the friendships, how much of a path that can set you up for success down the road. To me, that's the biggest thing is to make sure kids have the opportunities that I didn't have growing up because I can see the value in them. So, you know, do we want to grow our BAA? Yes. Do we want to have more All-American nominations? Yes. But I think if we can instill in our kids the values that's going to set them up for a lifetime of success, that's probably our biggest goal. a refreshing glass of milk, a cold bowl of ice cream, a delicious block of cheese, all made possible thanks to dedicated farmers and the world's perfect cow, the U.S. Registered Holstein. If you'd like to learn more about the many programs and services provided by Holstein Association USA, visit HolsteinUSA.com. On behalf of America's registered Holstein breeders, thanks for watching Holstein America. I'm Michelle Davidson.